For people who aren't familiar with this kind of art, I mean, maybe they've seen it, but don't really know much about it. Could you give a brief history of street art and, and also tell us what's the difference between street art and vandalism? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't gotten that question in a while. Um, I, I, let me start. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go with history first. I mean, street art and, and graffiti, um, which are, are two separate categories. It's, it's, um, I'm kind of, I'm trying to think what to compare it to. It's like all, uh, graffiti is street art, but not all street art is graffiti kind of thing. Okay. Um, and so you, you have kind of your history, which is, uh, in, uh, tagging and bombing, you know, writing your name, writing, uh, your crew's name or whatever, you know, all around the city on buses and trains and walls and signs and that sort of thing. And, and it is branched out into um you know bombing which is like creating big pieces or stickers wheat paste um you know murals installations sculptures 3d works uh and now even like some technological stuff with uh there's a few artists that work with neon signs with led with all sorts of stuff and so it started as a you know i have a can of rusto or i have a, a sharpie and i'm writing my name all over the city and, and has branched out into all these other forms and not and there are still plenty of artists still doing like writing their name wherever they go um but it is it has definitely gone from a purely kind of uh um here's my name i was here that sort of thing to like big massive like you know real art forms um and then the difference between graffiti and vandalism um <laughs> uh, i think i see a lot more things as graffiti than i do as vandalism uh there is sort of a loosely uh attended to code which is if it's public it's fair game um if it's private unless they pissed you off it's off limits <laughs> and uh you know i mean i live in kentucky and, and we spend a lot of time in eastern kentucky and in my opinion if if it's not man-made, you shouldn't touch it. And so when we go out to Eastern Kentucky and see overlooks and caves and stuff with spray paint, like I hate that shit. Um, yeah, same. Like, but uh, but yeah, so it's it's a lot of these artists walk a fine line between what's vandalism and what is graffiti. Um, I think a lot of it's also based on intent. Um, you know, so but it's it can be up in the air depending on who you ask. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now it's. At least in my perspective, it seems like street art has been become more acceptable in recent years. But do you still ever get pushback from anyone in Lexington? Yeah, um, we you know, there's a lot of people. It's, it is like, the, you know, the previous question. It's it's nuanced and it's difficult for a lot of people to understand the difference between it. Um, we get a lot of we get some pushback depending on the content of the work. Um, you know, it seems like it's an easy default insult to go from this is art this is graffiti and vandalism if someone doesn't like the content or the tone of a piece um you know we have um the the huge mto mural that's on manchester street in the distillery district when we started working on that piece we had um a gentleman from a local or organization that came down and said you know this is graffiti and it's vandalism and the graffiti is going to drive more graffiti and the graffiti is going to drive crime and gangs and the gangs are going to push the businesses out the tax values are going to go down this whole area is going to go to hell. Um, and, and there's 30 something businesses down there now. And there were two when we did it, you know, so a lot of it is, you know, people push back not only against what they don't know and what they don't like, but, you know, things that confuse them or things that, you know, bring up this emotion in them that, that makes them upset. And the, you know, the colors red and black tend to do that. And not only because we're in Lexington and, and Louisville and whatnot, but you know, it's it is a little bit more aggressive, and that that tends to push people and their emotions into into a range where they're uncomfortable with the art itself. Yeah, and you're referring to the the mural that's um, it's like a guy in a prison cell, and it's yeah, it's, yeah don't feed the artist, and it's kind of like yeah, that his hands are like this. It's his his name, and it's in a gas mask, and it is very. I mean, it's probably one of the more aggressive ones that we've done. But it's also something where we put it in an area of town that was, you know, it, at the time it was a bar and a brewery, 
And I mean, it's a bar, brewery, axe throwing, cidery. There's a venue across the street. It's not like, you know, it's not the brunch crowd spot. You know, <laughs> it is a more, um, you know, uh, hip, edgy, whatever buzzword you want to call it area. And so we were very careful about where we put that mural. Um, and we thought it kind of, you know, highlighted the area. And it seems to, I can't take all, I can't take any credit for it helping, but it, it doesn't seem to have hurt the area at all. No, definitely not. I mean, like you said, it's gone from two to like 30 businesses. And I, I have seen some that are a little more upscale. You've got the that vintage furniture store. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a coffee shop that is um, it's more upscale than most of the uh, shops in town. So mm -hmm. it's it's not driving people away. But I think yeah. the provocative nature of mm -hmm. that that image probably turned off uh, some of the wrong people, but you have to, you have to wonder, is there a double standard? Are they going to say it's, it's vandalism <laughs> if it's something, you know, if it's rainbows yeah. and kittens, something they like. Right, right. For sure. And, and, you know, and I do kind of live by a philosophy of if I'm not pissing somebody off, I I'm not doing anything interesting. You know, there, there's no <laughs> point in like being, you know, everyone asks, it's like, Oh, can you paint wings on a wall? And then we can stand by the wall and I can take a picture and put it on Instagram. It's like, not really what we're we're here for. I mean, somebody can do that. And that's totally cool. Um, but you know, it's it's you know, we we function as a community organization, so we're very aware of what we do and how it fits into the city that we live in. Um, but we also try not to compromise our our mission and, and what we want to do to to make people happy or to you know be the soup du jour of of Lexington art or whatever. Where did your love of street art come from? And then how did that turn into the idea for prohibition? Yeah, so um, I grew up in Connecticut. I'm a, I'm a Lexington transplant. I've been here for, oh God, way too long. Um, 18 years now, something like that. Uh, Lexington's now my home, but uh, I grew up uh, until I went to college. I lived in Connecticut and we would take a lot of trips into New York City and into Boston. Um, and I always love like riding the trains or driving in and you go under an underpass and be it, covered in art. You know, uh, and it's of all types. And it just really, I really got into that. Um, and, you know, I, I was exposed to guys like Shepard Ferry. And I actually had an opportunity to buy one of his stencils one time when I was really young. And I didn't. I will regret that forever. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, and so like I grew up loving it in that way. And then when I moved to Lexington, um, there was a local artist named Dronex who um, was everywhere if anybody's seen the little alien guys that were on every service in lexington and uh part of me was just obsessed with finding out who that guy was um i wanted to meet him i wanted to like get a sticker or like you know you know tell him that i love this stuff and so um when we when my wife and i were dating she was traveling for work and she said you know i'd like to watch a movie which i watched i was like oh you should watch exit through the gift shop the banksy flick and uh and so we got off the phone. She watched the movie. She called me back and was like, oh, uh, we need to have a street art festival. I was like, OK. <laughs> uh, and she was serious. And I, you know, I rolled with it. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, and so it was a fun way to tie in a lot of like all these artists who I admired and who worked on the street and who weren't in galleries to get them some exposure and to put them in you know, a gallery and, and highlight them in Lexington. And so I was able to, you know, take these things that I remember as a kid and, and be like, Oh, okay. Like I want to get involved in the scene and, and help out, you know, artists and expose them to other people. And then, you know, expose Lexington to people who aren't painting pictures of horses or making furniture out of bourbon staves or, you know, stuff like that. So it was cool. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And it's not a business for you, right? It's a labor of love for you and Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, uh, we do it completely for free. Uh, it's a nonprofit, but we also don't take any salaries. Um, every single dollar of the art of the money that we raise is put straight back into the art. Um, so we have no overhead, no administration fees. Uh, we just pull our hair out for like a month straight in October every year. Um, and, and also our, our gallery, which is, which is all local. Um, it's all Kentucky artists. Um, we don't take anything from that. The commission fee is super low and it all goes into the Lexington art league. And so they, uh, help focus on more Kentucky artists. So for us, it's, it's 
trying to keep you know um our the money concept out of it um because i think if we did it for money we'd hate it um it's what a, what a terrible job that would be <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't i don't want my passion to have a paycheck <laughs>